I'm in too deep to sleep Through me, Muhammad will forever speak Greek brothers with handshakes on ghetto landscapes Where a man is determined by how much a man may Cop cone yaks and some spit old raps With young cats with cigarettes in their ear Niggerets they appear under the food Who is a guru, that's untapped Wanna be in the rap race but ain't ran one lap Ran so far from the streets that you can't come back You tripping with nowhere to unpack Forgot that all right everyone i think we can begin um welcome to the second installment of the daily city by nihon showcase um this is brought to you by the Center for Innovative Practices through Hip Hop and Education and Research, also known as Cypher, um, the Associated Students of Skyline College, Filipino, Mel Filipino Mental Health Initiative, San Mateo County, and the National Alliance for Filipino Concerns, or otherwise known as NAFCON, NorCal, um, will be your MCs for the evening. Hi everyone, I'm Elena Arroyo. I'm the Commissioner of Activities in the Associated Students of Skyline College. I'm also part of Anak Bayan Daily City and I'll be one of the MCs for the showcase. And I am your co-host, uh, James Dumlau. I'm a member of NAFCON NorCal and it's our pleasure for us to uh, host this event for y'all. Uh, this showcase is really meant to bring folks uh, from Daily City in this community together. Um, community and organizations, right, in the spirit of Bainihan and community, right, to showcase this area's uh, immense talent. And we know that this area has a lot of talent and we wanna feature that and showcase that. Um, and we also value this space as a uh, place of healing and expression, right, to support our local Cabo Bayan in the midst of the pandemic going on right now. Before we get started, we want to go over the showcase logistics. Just letting y'all know, everyone will be muted except for the performers and presenting organizations. I also encourage y'all to turn on your video if you're comfortable doing so, but also be mindful of your video and turn it off or have a virtual background if the video is distracting. You can also select view options and turn on side-by-side -side mode or gallery view to see everyone's faces while we share our screen. The tech crew will be monitoring the chat and space and we have people checking the whole Zoom room. And this showcase will also be recorded and streamed on YouTube. We also have community agreements established by our planning team. We shall respect the space, be kind with each other, and seek to understand. Keep an alcohol slash drug free virtual space. Show up with an open mind and community minded attitude. And we're here to support performers, our presenters, and listen to what people will share. If any of these agreements aren't met, we'll kindly ask you to leave the space. We'll be going through heavy topics during the showcase, but people are here to support you. Steph from FMHI. Uh, from San Mateo County is a licensed mental health clinician available to talk to anyone during and post-show support. You can reach out to her directly in the chat if anything may be triggering for you. To start off, we want to hear from you. Please use the Padlet link in the chat room. Once you're Padlet, please introduce yourselves with your name, location, pronouns, and what you're excited for. For example, my name is Elaine. I'm in South San Francisco. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm excited for the org presentations. Let's take a minute to see who's here. So again, if folks could uh, click, the link is here. Let me share this link for folks. And if you check the chat room, uh, you can see the link for the Padlet. So uh, feel free folks to um, add in. If you look at the bottom right, once this pops up in your browser on the bottom right, you'll see a little plus sign. Uh, just hit that plus sign and feel free to write uh, that information that we were saying.
All right. So if y'all could take a look, this is uh got a lot of folks here um, from all over the Bay, actually, you can see. So uh, welcome. Um, and we'll, what we'll do is uh, if, if everyone can just keep this Padlet up, um, we'll also talk about what we'll be using this Padlet for. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to um, continue to write on this wall. We'll be using this to kind of kind of debrief and check out with everyone. So um, again, uh, please use this Padlet. Um, all right, so we're gonna um, kind of talk about the theme of uh, this month's showcase. And um, we really wanted to focus, uh, the folks who organized this um, monthly showcase really wanted to bring up this notion of people power and how people power um, can exist in a pandemic. So um, as you can see, this is a uh, image um, of a recent um, protest that happened in Manila uh, where folks, um, you know, practice their collective action. Um, however, right, socially distanced style um, in the midst of the pandemic. And so you can see the way that uh, folks have been doing that. Um, but before, you know, we begin, you know, we, we want to kind of define what people power is uh, for everyone. And then, you know, rem remembering that people power, right, is the collective power of the people, right, from many different sectors. You know, you got youth, students, workers, women, educators, lawyers, doctors, teachers, um, church people, right, um, all with a common shared goal, right, for the liberation of, of people. And um, we could kind of take a look back into, right, the historical context of where, you know, this phrase people power comes from, like stemming back to 1986, people power on EDSA, right, the street where, you know, for days, thousands of people were gathered, right, to show their collective power against uh, the Marcos regime and the dictatorship, right? And again, where we see that phrase, people power, um, really was was shown, right, um, to the world and 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 shown. So uh, we kind of transitioned to like other examples, right? Uh, currently, right, the, the, this year's um, Black Lives Matter protests are happening um, in light of, right, the fight against systemic racism, police brutality, um, so that there are changes, right? Systemic changes, um, police reform, abolition, um, the list goes on. And um, we want to make this connection, right, to uh, what's going on here, to what's going on in the Philippines. And, you know, the, you're currently seeing collective action um, and people power um, practice right now and against um, the anti-terror bill and just the ongoing and worsening uh, human rights violations that are happening in the Philippines. So, um, you know, these are all examples of collective and uh, action and power. Um, and these are all responses to oppression, um, unfair treatment, control, right? Oppression that spreads, right? Kind of like a virus um, to the people, right? To the point where it goes from people to people, it affects, you know, exponentially different many types of people to the point where folks have had to say enough. And um, this is why we're here, right? To uh, relate this to how this relates to a pandemic. Um, and so, you know, we define pandemic as a, this disease or an outbreak um, that is prevalent all over a country or, you know, all over the world. And so, um, you know, although we do see COVID, right, as, uh, you know, the, the outbreak uh, virus that's happening, right, there's, there exist other pandemics, um, right? And they've manifested in many different ways, right? We, we see it in racism. Uh, we see pandemics of systemic racism, police brutality, poverty, um, political repression, right? And, um, you know, we have to see the link um, between these pandemics, um, especially between COVID-19 and racism, um, you know, here in our country, right? We can't forget that COVID-19 is, you know, disproportionately killing more of the black and brown communities, right, at, at a disproportionately higher rate. Um, and you see, we, we see um, COVID-19 hospitalization rates, right, the highest among black, indigenous, and people of color communities. Um, so, you know, that kind of leads us to um, ask the questions, right, you know, in what ways can we practice and engage in people 
power during these unprecedented times? And, you know, what are the moments of people power that we can draw from? And we're going to kind of learn that today with a, a lot of the organizations um, here to present. And, you know, um, how can we see the change, right, to dismantle these different pandemics that we're um, living in right now? So um, just wanted to uh, quickly kind of give an introduction, right? That's why we're here and what, why we've asked uh, three different organizations to join us today. Um, they're here to share how people power, right, can respond to the many pandemics. And um, they're here to share their efforts and how we as a Daily City community, right, can support. Um, and so the uh, first uh, of the organizations here to present will be Anakbayan Daily City. Um, they'll be sharing their uh, local efforts here in the area. And after that, we'll be hearing from NAFCON NorCal, um, who will be focusing on the regional efforts here in the Bay Area in Northern California. And then we'll kind of expand this a little bit further, well, a lot further globally. Um, and we'll be hearing um, all the way from Mindanao in the Philippines uh, from Liang Network. While we enjoy the performances and presentations, we'll have a community quilt to help people engage throughout the showcase. Please use Padlet to share your reactions or thoughts through this event and the performances. As y'all may have noticed earlier, you can add pictures, videos, files, and more. And also feel free to answer this question. How can you or we use people power during the pandemic? Now that we've covered the programming logistics and our theme, it's time to share the stage with our community. Community, Let's start the show. I'm very excited to hear from our performers and presenters. Show us that you're ready and make some noise in the chat or on Padlet. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Let's go. All right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give it up for Dr. Rod Doss McBall for our introduction speech. On deck will be our first performer, Julian. What's going on, y'all? I hope you're all doing well out there. Um, it's been a crazy time, but I think whenever there's crisis, there's hope. And uh, just to give y'all just a quick introduction, because I know there's a lot of performers out there and they want to share your passions with everyone. Um, you know, part of... <laughs> of what I've been doing is I'm part of all these different hats. You know, I'm wearing like the Pinoy Pinoy Educational Partnership. So for those that are in the call, shout out to the, my PEP teachers out there. I'm also part of Skyline College. So all my Skyline, Co Skyline College family, what's up with that? And then I'm also council member for the City Daily City. And I just want y'all, I'm just gonna give y'all an update about what, what I've been doing along with all the other leaders in Daily City. So I'm um, part of the Filipino American Democratic Club of San Mateo County, we had a couple of food drives that that um, fed over 3,000 meals during Mother's Day and Father's Day. So Mother's Day, we gave out like some food and then on, on Father's Day, we gave out barbecue and all that. Um, but most importantly, in terms of being politically engaged and um, within the political process, one of the quotes that I I live by is by a quote by Dr. Don Mabala that said, you know, be part of the process before times of protest. Right, because we need to make decisions before we get into the times of protest. One of the most important things is, is to fill out your census 2000 um, forms. That dictates like um, where politicians were, we're gonna put the money and the resources to. So get that in, register to vote. This is gonna be the most important election of our lifetimes, locally, regionally, and especially federally. So if you're not registered to vote, please register to vote ASAP, okay? Um, also, we have upcoming city council meetings. I know there's been talks up and down uh, the county about, you know, policing. What can policing look like? What can we reimagine it? And um, city councils, especially in, in Daly City, we've been hosting these these um, these open sessions to talk about um, policing in our society and what we can do to to uh, transform it and change it. So how we can we re reinvest into youth, youth programs or how we can reinvest and get more social workers instead of um, having folks call 911 and have like, um, you know, people that are homeless, we don't have to use police for that, but we could have like social workers to help, um, help the community with that. Also, um, 
on a personal tip as well, um, since I'm a instructor in Skyline College in the, in the combined learning community and the cipher learning community, I'm teaching a class along with Michael. Uh, where's Michael at? Yeah, I see Michael, <laughs> he's gonna perform later. But we're gonna be, I have a class called History 435, History of the Philippines. Um, please, if um, anybody wants to sign up, sign up. All the classes are gonna be online. Um, when we talk about people power, that's basically where I root this class is about, is about healing hope. Um, and you know, what do we, what do we wanna restore our justice to, right? So um, History of the Philippines, 435, and also Sociology 142, which is basically a decolonization Philippine identity class. So uh, I know I have former students on this call that have been part of this, um, those classes, so please sign up. And that's enough for me. I want to hear more of the performances. So I'll throw it back to the MCs, back to James and Elaine. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Manungrad. Um, yeah, let's get started with the first performer. Um, his name is Julian. And so uh, if y'all could show some love. Uh, Julian is up and on deck will be Nate. So if y'all can give it up for Julian. Yay, thank you so much. Um, so, wow, I never thought I'd be doing this ever. And I'm very excited to actually do this. I was here for the, for the first one. I got to see Versal perform and that was so like uplifting and I'm so grateful to be able to perform this time around. Uh, shout out to Pet Fam. Shout out to Bai Nihon. Shout out to y'all for putting this together. I, yeah, my boy Alvin. Love you, bro. Thank you. Two pieces. <laughs> Which I do too. <laughs> um, the first one is uh, it's called B. B E. <clears throat> I put the X in identity because of the crossroad. You flex your supremacy, I feed you my knuckles. Chaos is my energy, I harness the emerald colonized mentality, taught me how to cut throat. My last grandparent white, that's a privilege. Brown ones died first, far away from villages. My Punai mom lost both parents at 14 and was forced to leave Guam to live in Delhi City. My Spanish orphan paternal grandpa was pushed through homes in the 30s and 40s, then died before I was grown. And I'm tortured because he never told me his own story, but I lived with my grandme to mourn his passing glory. Abandonment put a scar on my psyche. Psych, I'll hurt you before you do it to me. Or maybe I'll blurt out scores and act petty. You're so pretty, please pet my ego's fantasy. So that was the first one, that was B. Um, I'm mixed race, so a lot of the times my mind is just so caught up with this intersection. And uh, really to understand it is to understand the history of like yourself. So that was like my own translation of my narrative in the verse. Um, so the second one, the second one is a little bit more lighthearted and fun. It's called Bars. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> I heard you on bars, so I came from the barrio. Barring a setback, I embark like cardio. Don't be embarrassed, cause I'm a barbarian. Beat my bare chest and barter with librarians. I barbecue barnacles in bikini bottom, then bargain with barbers when they cut me rotten. I barf at embargoes designed to oppress, then barge into bars with my sorrow and stress. I bark at proposals that discount my value. Bards that are hopeful help recount my haikus. Barricades buckle when baritones hum. Barbituate barcodes make barbies numb. Barrage the market with exquisite style. Bombard my target with elegant guile. Giddy as charge, I'm a barrier for hate. Witty wit charm, you barren, I create. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> there's a lot of bars. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, y'all, let's hear it up. Give it up for Julian. Thank you for sharing, Julian. Next up, we have Nate, and on deck will be Anakbayan Daily City's presentation. Yo, what's good, everybody? How you doing? Um, give it a one time for Julian with them bars, man. Uh, Got to go follow that. I got to break down barriers with that one. <laughs> That's for you, Julian, for sure. Um, yeah, my name is Nate Devado. I am a counselor at Skyline College. I am also um, the coordinator for the Cypher Hip Hop Learning Community, also the director of Rock the School Bells Bay Area. Um, very humbled and grateful to be part of this space. Um, this piece that um, I'll do is about legacy, and I think that as we are um, in, this, in this time, in this age, um, locally and globally, um, it's very important to understand the power of our own voices, um, our narratives. It's very important to, to ensure that our stories are being told. Um, so, uh, so this is a piece that I call um, uh, Legacy, and it has a little hip hop flavor to it. And so um, I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> So legacy, legacy are the imprints we leave behind for many generations to find and redefine. It's evolution like transitions from the six step to the windmills drop down to a head spin. I'm repping like MCs huddled together on a cold blistery Chicago night, spitting rhymes more hotter than the fire that surrounds them. We are the writers that sprays on walls, carves on classroom desks with textures and colors not only to be seen, but also to be heard. We are the scientists of wax manipulating sound through scratches and reverb to create something amazing from something great. We are the legacies that grows like roses in concrete. We are the communities of dancers, the litany of artists, the congregation of MCs and the record and the local record shops. So what, it, what is our legacy? You see Africans do science and mathematics, the Egyptians built the pyramids. Then they were thrown onto ships, the white man rewrote their narratives. We see these stories play out in classrooms planted in the minds of their youth. The erasure of the history systematically hiding them from the truth. We are not the counter narratives, we are the narrative. Our narrative should never be the alternative, but the imperative. We are not the counter, we are the dominant. We're not the question, we're the period that stamps our prominence. So what is our legacy? You see, we are history, we are evolution. We are resistance and revolution. We are the embodiment of our ancestors. We are here. We are legacy. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Yes, thank you for that, Nate. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Nate's also one of the members of the organizing project for these uh, showcases and just want to give it up for him for, uh, for uh, being able to step up and, and perform a piece uh, when we're looking for performers. So again, give it up for Nate. Um, that was such a great piece. Um, and so on next we have our presenting organization, Anak um, Bayan Daily City, and sharing uh, with the great work that they're doing locally will be Pat so uh, if y'all can show some love to Pat and uh, the folks at Anakbayan Daily City. Cool, what up y'all? Um, so I'm trying to screen share real quick. Um, can y'all hear me okay though? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually not a part of Anakbayan Daily City. I'm just here to support um, one of our members, uh, Roel Paragas, who's on right now, will actually, um, I'll be co-presenting with him. But um, Roel, if you can go uh, say what's up real quick to everybody. Hello, everyone. This is Roel from Unagbine Daily City. Cool. And then, of course, uh, you got me, Pat. Uh, I'm with the uh, Justice for our Rainbow Bright Workers Task Force. So um, yeah, we'll just uh, go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so go ahead and take it away, uh, Roel. Unagbine Daily City. Unagbine is a comprehensive youth and student organization fighting for national liberation and genuine democracy in the Philippines. Anakbayan translate to children of the nation. We are an overseas chapter based in Daly City. We build unity among 
Filipino youth of all backgrounds to fight for national democracy with a socialist perspective in the Philippines. Solidarity is an important component of our organizing as an overseas chapter. We join in solidarity with the Black Liberation Movement, defund the military, abolish ICE, defend press freedom, and free education. Issues we worked on in Data City were justice for rainbow bright workers. Cool. Is it okay if I go to the next slide? Yeah, next slide. All right. Um, people's state of the nation this address, PSONA. What is SONA? SONA is the state of nation address. Annual presidential address to the nation regarding current issues and a summation of the administration's performance for the year, usually held on the last Monday of July. What is PSONA? People's state of, na of nation address is the counter toward the narrative of the current administration's SONA. Various sectors within Philippine society and Filipinos abroad partake in PSONA to express the outrage against the anti people policies of the administration. Policies target the most vulnerable communities, often resulting in extrajudicial killings, illegal detention, and or targeted harassment by state forces. Since the anti-terror law is put into place, Philippine X activists and other activists are labeled as terrorists, even if we have our own opinion about the government. An example is that if you draw a meme about President Duterte, or anything against US imperialism on social media, you will be labeled as a terrorist. As activists, we do not use weapons or any violence against the government. This is why we have to take action now on these issues, because if we do not act, how will there be a change in democracy? Next slide. Join, so um, we have P we have PSONA happening on Monday, July 27th which is rage, rage against the anti-terror law. We need volunteers for these committees, security, finance, prop. Please attend weekly Malaya Pisona planning meetings on Thursday, um, July 16, or Monday, July 20th at 6 p.m. The RSVP link is underneath the section. Next slide. So um, you know, before I move forward to um, this part, so yeah, you know, for for uh, Anakbay and Daily City, um, yeah, they're they're a part of the planning committee for um, People Sona. I know um, a lot of us have heard about uh, what's happening in the Philippines with the anti-terror law, uh, which was just signed um, by President Duterte. So um, you know, I know a lot of folks have been um, concerned for those who have heard about it. Um, you know, and folks kind of want to figure out different ways that they can take action. Um, so in, in the process of, um, you know, um, joining, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're calling on folks to um, join us in the streets uh, or uh, virtually as well um, on uh, July 27th, uh, 2020. Um, so yeah, you know, if, if folks have, uh, have uh, time and want to contribute, we, we really want to uh, encourage folks to um, join these committees. Um, so as part of um, the local work that we're taking care of that, um, another aspect that we're taking care of, uh, particularly in Daily City is um, the Justice for Rainbow Bright Workers campaign. So for folks um, uh, who haven't heard, um, there have been these facilities um, in Daily City and Pacifica called the Rainbow Bright uh, Daycare and Adult Care Facilities, uh, where um, uh, a uh, dozens of uh, Filipino workers uh, were tra uh, labor trafficked from the Philippines and have been um, abused by their employers, uh, the Gamos family, uh, over a span of 10 years. Um, so because of ongoing investigations, um, they were actually, um, their facilities were actually raided about two years ago on September 2018. And um, there's a pending criminal trial um, set to begin um, next month uh, in uh, mid-August. Um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of asking, you know, for, for Anakabaya and Daily City, um, you know, they've been a key, um, they played a key role in helping gather these, um, um, these uh, Filipino migrant workers, right? So, you know, one of, one of the things that AB really tries to take care of is engaging uh, all members of the Filipino community. Um, and through here, um, they've been able to assist with translations, um, 
with, um, you know, just making them feel a lot more comfortable. Um, a lot of these migrant workers, um, you know, have fa they, they faced a lot of trauma from these experiences of uh, working uh, for the Gamos family. Um, and what uh, Anak Bayan was able to do was actually help contribute to empowering these workers. Um, and now um, what they've done is actually build up um, an association amongst them so that they could um, build, build strength and unity amongst one another and tackle um, the issue at hand, but also um, address the different issues that are happening in the Philippines, like the anti-terror law. Um, and because of uh, the work that uh, Anak Bayan Daily City has done, um, they've also helped form the uh, Justice for Rainbow Bright Workers Campaign Task Force. Um, so right now what um, folks are doing with that is uh, creating different, um, a, a storytelling campaign to capture the experiences of uh, these uh, former Rainbow Bright workers uh, so that we can let folks know that what happened to them was uh, unjust. Um, so, you know, um, in, the, in our short presentation, you know, this is what um, Anakabai and Bailey City is really uh, tackling locally right now. Um, uh, the campaign for uh, fighting for justice for Rainbow Bright workers, but also uh, contributing to um, the, um, the plans for um, the People's Sona uh, happening in a few weeks. Now, um, of course, uh, we always want to offer the opportunity for folks to uh, get involved and to um, just keep up with us and the different issues that are happening uh, in Daly City, as well as in um, the Philippines. So, uh, you know, we, uh, if folks are interested in joining uh, any of these groups, um, you know, feel free to hit all these handles. Uh, you can follow Anakbayan Daily City on Instagram at Anakbayan Daily City. Um, one of the other organizations that they're partnered with right now also is uh, the Malaya Movement, uh, uh, NorCal. So you can follow them on their Facebook and Twitter, uh, which is here. And then um, for folks who want to get involved with the Justice for Rainbow Bright Workers campaign, um, you can follow us on Facebook, um, Justice for Rainbow Bright Workers Campaign, or even email us at uh, justiceforrbworkers at gmail.com if uh, you have any further questions, um, if there's uh, different ways you want to get involved. Um, so yeah, you know, um, there's a lot of uh, issues that are happening, uh, but, uh, you know, we hope uh, you can join us. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in any of these, uh, feel free to just uh, private message uh, Roel or I, and uh, we'll be happy to build with y'all. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, unless folks have any questions or anything, or you can just PM us if you have questions. All right. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Roel. Uh, I'm buying daily city and the justice for rainbow bright workers campaign task force. Uh, a lot of great work happening locally. So folks, if you're, uh, interested in, again in, in joining their efforts or supporting um, please feel to reach out to them we'll also be sending a lot of this information that we're going over today with a follow-up email after the showcase um, and so just to want to get make sure we're providing all the resources we're going over today so um, wanted to uh, move it on to the next performer and we have coming up and I'm, I apologize for not giving you a uh, uh, heads up, but Jazz, you are up next um, and on deck will be PJ. So uh, if we could show some love uh, coming up to the stage, Jazz. Hello, everybody. Um, so glad to be here. My name is Jazz. Uh, I'm a queer Filipinx, Native Hawaiian, Puerto Rican, and white trans non-binary person that was born and raised in Daly City. Uh, I was introduced about two years ago to FMHI at a county open mic event, which was raising awareness um, on mental health issues. And I've uh, really um, enjoyed my uh, engagement with FMHI and participation over the past couple of years. It's really been um, uh, really grounding for me uh, to build community with all, with, with all the folks there. So I believe in art as uh, activism and healing. I have particularly used spoken word to process and reflect on my identities and social issues as a youth, which deepened in college when I was at UC Santa Cruz during that time, I participated in a, a multicultural theater troupe called Rainbow 
theater uh, and I created a, a play out of poetry with my other POC peers uh, centering on our stories. I was involved in Filipino student organizing where I learned about our colonial mentality and our history of resistance, which is the people power revolution, uh, which materialized in uh, annual cultural arts events. So I say all this because I was so empowered and inspired um, by the coming together of communities collectively to uplift uh, stories that were so often up, unrep, uh, underrepresented and untold in uh, mainstream education and uh, entertainment. So a lot of my poetry seeks to uh, reclaim my history, uh, the untold stories of what I was not taught through traditional schooling that reinforced oppressive narratives. Uh, and I seek to uncover myself and those that exist in the margins. And as Julian uh, mentioned earlier, intersectionality through writing and performance. So I think spaces like this are so important to build community and to inspire collective action. So with that, I um, offer this poem. It's titled Reflections from My Borderlands, which I wrote about 10 years ago. So really excited to, uh, to share this and see um, how much it uh, is still true um, from when I was uh, 18, 19 years old. All right, so reflections from my borderlands. I am queer and mixed. I am queer mixed. I am queering and mixing. I am a queer remix. I rise despite demise. I am fluid and colonized. I am not soluble. I refuse to diffuse my identity for your simplicity. I am expanding and identified. I am shifting across blood relations packed with complexity, across imperial castrations of ideal sexuality, across constructions of gender binaries. To refine my mind crossing borders outside comfort zones where home is not stationary. I am not a clone of society. I am not conforming to norms imposed by conquistadors or missionaries, to the production of wars or its visionaries that glared in the eyes of the indigenous, stripping them bare of cultural prize. They part apart, pried apart our roots, continuing to uproot our growth, but I surface along the coast. I am stretching across globes out of two-dimensional atlases to combat the foes that rupture native practices. I am fighting for what is meant for me and all of my hybridity while you strip of culture. I twitch in sculpture, trying to understand why I came to exist as mixed, as queer by your script. I am burning in my own matter, this internal occupation that cuts flesh to bones to mind, attempting to barricade resistance. I want to build bridges with intersections across oceans. The Pacific is stirring, a body stretching across lands that link journey to sands. I am mixing of wars and languages that drown in the sound to the beat of conquered ground. I am forming, surfacing through diaspora, born and storming. I am queer and mixed, I appear out of ocean, out of violence, out of borders opened, harbored, then shut to, li to license. They attempt to control my body with binaries, with textbook histories, but in all of my injuries, I seek healing in community, shattering the silence of a queer mixed identity. Thank you. Woo! Oh! Thank you, Jazz, for your spoken word. That was really deep. I also noticed that everyone's supporting each other in the chat throughout the performances. Let's keep the energy up and give it up for PJ. Hello. Um, my name is PJ. Um, I'm a Filipino producer, singer, songwriter, and I wish I had something like deeper to sing to to kind of relate to what the theme of this is, but uh, this is a song I wrote yesterday, uh, just about a girl, so. It's called Mia Moore. Just get out of here, all those things you say in those blank pages. Baby, I don't like your cadence I meant the things I said Your smell still on my bed I washed my sheets a week ago Will I even see you though? You linger on But you linger on If 
these strings are my canvas, baby. They're what I draw, I sing, and you're in awe. You're good, but you're the baddest for now. I'm what you want, I'm your all until he calls. You are my heart, see my core, me and more. I wanna save you. Tear me apart if anybody holds you other than myself. You've seen my art, I don't want to bore you But half of the catalog is written for you are my heart, see my core, me and more, I can't afford you mm. Your light years ahead of me, I'll never catch up when you were 17, you thought you'd grown up. Last year I was 23, learned there's no guarantees. I thought that I'd be famous and you'd be in bed next to me, but now I'm so cold and I feel alone. And you linger on, you linger on. If these strings are my canvas, baby, they're what I draw, I sing, and you're in awe. You're good, but you're the baddest for now. I'm what you want, I'm your all, until he calls. You are my heart, see my core, me and more, I want to save you. Tear me apart if anybody holds you other than myself. You've seen my art, I don't want to bore you But half of the catalog is written for you You are my heart, see my core, me and more I can't afford you I can't afford you I can't afford to lose you Cause you linger on Let's give it up for PJ. That was a wonderful song. Thank now, you. We'll, now we'll switch to another presentation by Nafka Norcal, original organization. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear cool. you. Cool, <laughs> thanks. Uh, where's my presentation? Hi again, uh, hi everybody. Um, I'm Kirby Aralio. I'm NAPCON's uh, coordinator for National Coordinator of Culture and Heritage. Uh, oops, this is not the one I want to share. Not yet. <laughs> and I'm just going to give you a brief background on our Pioneer uh, response to COVID 19. Well, what do you see on your screen? Because on my screen, it shows something else. Sorry. <laughs> do you, can somebody I just describe it? I just see a screenshot of. Uh, the zoom and then your uh, but also has your slide there too oh, okay uh, where's the other slide I think we see your desktop there we see the slide now okay there we go <laughs> so yeah so just a little bit about uh, NAFCON um, we are a uh, national alliance we're an action oriented alliance of Philippine organizations, service institutions, businesses and individuals that promotes the rights and well being of Filipinos across the US and in the Philippines. Um, we have a lot of members, we have doctors, priests, um, pastors, um, uh, we have educators, we have restaurant owners. So that is really like bringing the community together. We have youth uh, leaders. And we really, uh, we're, we're an action-oriented alliance to promote the rights and well-being of our Filipino people. Um, I don't know if that's where they go next. And then we have our points of unity. So if you agree to all these four points of unity, you can join AFCON. One of them is empowerment of Filipino communities in the U.S., the preservation and celebration of Filipino culture and heritage, the promotion of the rights, health, and well-being of Filipinos, and advocacy for Filipino communities in the U.S. and the marginalized communities in the Philippines. So if you agree to all of those four, four points of unity, you can definitely join NAFCON. Um, and then we also have pillars where we channel our, our, our efforts for our community. Uh, my, 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 
my the first one is my pillar, culture and heritage, uh, preserve and celebrate the rich Filipino culture and ensure comprehensive understanding of our heritage. I know we have a lot of educators uh, here with us tonight, and I appreciate what you're doing to, to educate our community about our community because we don't really learn about our people when you go to the, you know the, the traditional schools and education system, not even in the Philippines. So we're lucky to have uh, educators who teaches our culture and our, our heritage in our classrooms. Whenever you, if you have the chance, if you have like like um, the, the class I was mentioned earlier, you should definitely enroll in that one to, to learn more about our people. And again, education. So we empower our community through community-based learning engagement, including workshops, integrations, and trainings. Um, for example, when you go to the medical ministry in the Philippines, we don't just go to, to the Philippines to provide uh, aid, but we also uh, immerse ourselves in the community and learn from the community, learn from the, the local leaders and what they're doing to address the issues that their people are facing, our people are facing. And speaking of medical mission, we also have the health and wellness pillar to promote access to sustainable and culturally humble health care and awareness to underserved Filipino communities in the U.S. and in the Philippines. And lastly, we have the advocacy pillar to engage our communities to participate in actions to protect the rights and welfare of Filipinos in the U.S. and for economic prosperity and peace in the Philippines. So we do a, a lot of advocacy as well. Um, and this is just a, I, I love maps since I was seven or three years old. <laughs> so this is just a map of the U.S. where you can find NAFCON, um, NAFCON uh, chapters and uh, member organizations and institutions. Uh, for example, uh, the Foundation for Philippine Progress in Seattle is part of NAFCON. The Philippine Community Center in San Francisco is part of NAFCON. The Belosan Center for Philippine Studies here in Davis is part of NAFCON. Uh, Philippine Wagon Center in SoCal. There's a lot of uh, institutions as well are a part of NAFCO, and this is just a map, and we're, we have growing teams in Utah and Hawaii and Texas as well. So if you know anybody who would like to get involved in the community who are from these states, let us know. Um, yeah. So our Bayanian community response to COVID-19, which is our biggest campaign this year because of COVID, of course, has four aspects. One is research and education, service, second is services, third is action and advocacy, and resource mobilization. And it's just to give you an example, here's an example from uh, nearby <laughs> San Francisco. So for resource and education, they do a lot of survey of health workers and help community members file for unemployment. And they partner with um, Philippine X Health Initiative to do weekly virtual health series. Um, for services, they do wellness checks and food delivery programs. Partner, partnering with food vendors to continue until the end of July and delivered over 700 meals. This is as of a few weeks ago. So this is probably more now. Um, and for action advocacy, they mobilized to support the Grand Princess ship workers who were stranded in, in, in on the ship in the bay and then moved to SoCal and then moved somewhere else. And then we also have resource mobilization for San Francisco. They partnered with organizations and to, to raise monetary donations for our community. And another example from the Bay is South Bay. They collect PPEs from different places to give to those who are in frontline, frontline Filipino workers. And they have creative fundraisers as well, such as local online concerts like this one. And they do yoga online. I don't know how to do that, but yeah. <laughs> they collaborated with a lot of local community um, leaders such as Astrologic, a, a, a musical duo and, and a yoga studio. And they also uh, plan on releasing a resource guide for Filipinos in the South Bay. So those are just examples of what NAFON does. And these are also other examples from different parts of the country, which I'm not going to go over. Um, but yeah, so this is just some pictures of our, 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 a lot of our programs that have been happening since COVID-19 in New York, in Texas, in Utah, and um, in Seattle. So we, we do work with the community um, to, to address the needs the immediate needs within the local community. So our programs are not just like one size fits all. We have different programs for different community. For example, in Utah and Texas, the biggest issue is the J1 workers. So they, they do a lot of like um, supporting and providing food and services for the J1 workers. Um, in Seattle, they support a lot of the Filipino farmers and Hmong farmers in, in the community by, by, you know, purchasing the flowers and delivering it to the frontline workers. So that's to show appreciation. So we do have a lot of a variety of programs you can get involved in. So our, 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 our theme for 2020 is Magkai San Camilos to, to, to stand in unity and take, in, take action and join our Bayanian spirit. And speaking of Bayanian spirit, I want to go to a different slide. Where's my other one? Because um, there's something, you know, urgent that's happening right now in the community. And uh, Pat and uh, Bayan earlier uh, mentioned it. It's the anti-terror where is it? I had it. Uh, there, can you see this one? Cool. 
So just a little bit about anti the anti-terror law, if you haven't heard about it yet. It's in the news right now. Um, it's, a, it's a law that allows the Philippine government to label and treat any Filipino citizens, including those living abroad, such as us, as terrorists for expressing dissent or any criticisms against the government. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very dangerous law. And um, if you want to learn more about it, we had a webinar uh, last week or a few weeks ago uh, on it with, with lawyers from the Philippines. So you can, you can uh, watch that webinar on our Facebook page. Um, in, in collaboration with Kabatan Alliance. So it's a really dangerous law that, that enables the government to target anybody who, 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 who just you know, wanna support a community. Because for, for me, for example, my, my main concern is when you know, we, we work with a lot of the grassroots organizations in the Philippines to provide medical aid to the, to the communities that are, that are impacted by COVID-19 and by other, you know, the health situation in the Philippines. And, and that is also put in danger because of this law, because for the government that, that, that could be seen as, or misconstrued as, ter as a form of terrorism by the broad definitions of this law. So, so yeah, NACON joins the, community, the Filipino community across the Philippines and across the United States in criticizing the government of the Philippines for, for signing this bill into law, this, this very uh, problematic bill into law. Um, um, someone uh, mentioned that, you know, I think it was Angel Luxin, this Filipina, uh, famous Filipina actress who recently mentioned that, you know, back in the day, we just learned about martial law in the Philippines. We just studied it in school, but now we are feeling it because of the recent... Um, um, crack down on a lot of dissent, even um, just a few days ago, or was it yesterday, that, that the Congress of the Philippines denied the renewal of ABS-CBN's franchise. So if you're familiar with TFC, that's TFC's parent company in the Philippines as being silenced because of being seen as anti-Duterte. Anti so that's our, one of our uh, main concerns today. And there's a lot of ways to take action. One is, one of the biggest one I wanna emphasize is really the to support the introduction to the Philippine Human Rights Acts. ACT or PHRA, this bill is to suspend the United States security assistance to the Philippines until such time as human rights violations by the Philippine security forces cease and the responsible state forces are held accountable. So if you did not know, like a lot of our money, tax dollar, taxpayers dollar in the United States goes to the Philippines to support the, the state. And, and, and one way we can keep them accountable is, is really pushing for this um, uh, Philippine Human Rights Act. So you, you can inform your legislators about the Philippine Human Rights Act and ask them to support and introduce the bill. So sign and share the petition in support of the Philippine Human Rights Act at tinyurl.com slash PHRA petition. So these are some ways that you can take action now to support the communities in the Philippines, not just, you know, not just in the US, but also in the Philippines. Cool. Um, yeah, so, so just that's pretty much it. And instead of, you know, we're not raising these concerns to sow fear, but to encourage unity among our people. Let's, let's keep this, the Bayanian spirit alive and draw inspiration from the collective work we've been doing throughout the years and throughout this past month, especially, and stand in solidarity with our communities, not just in the US, but also in the Philippines. Uh, maraming salamat. Oh yeah, and if you have questions, just let us know. <laughs> Thank you, Kirby. Um, I want to say uh, for all that information. Um, I know there was a lot to process. So, um, Kirby, if you can, um, there's a Padlet that um, I think if you could uh, send oh, yeah. the link again for. And yeah. if uh, folks were asking if you could provide those links in the Padlet. Um, but again, we'll be sending uh, these resources to you all uh, in an email, a follow up email also. Um, but again, uh, thank you, Curry, for sharing a lot of the great work that you're doing regionally and nationally, right, to support uh, not just our local combine here in um, the States, but uh, also out in the Philippines as well. And again, if uh, any of y'all are interested in uh, supporting um, NAFCON uh, or uh, Capitan Alliance, uh, feel free to reach out to these folks um, here through the chat or um, through the links that are provided um, on the Padlet. And again, as we send you all resources later. Um, so uh, we're gonna move on to more performances. We have uh, Charlene coming up next. Sorry for not giving you much of a heads up. Um, and on deck will be Michael. So uh, Charlene, if you can get ready to perform and on deck with Michael. Uh, folks, if we could show some love to Charlene, thank you very much for being here, and the uh, mic is yours. Woo! All right, thank you guys. Um, I'm gonna do a song I've never really performed for anyone, but I've 
it's, it's a really old one, but it's always relevant. So um, it's called Insomnia. And yeah, and then I'm gonna do a spoken word piece after this, so. not really finished but <laughs> um now i'm gonna do a spoken word piece it's always kind of changing and it used to be like a part one through four but it's kind of just this creature that keeps moving and um yeah uh this sediment has sentiment where do i begin her calm wrath beneath our feet tides closing in what pits us against them blindly follow us as we kick our own shins no wonder no one wins. Always questioning, what do you intend? Does every being wish to be enlightened? This grave we've dug has overflowed. When can we see again? Uh, so when the stagnation of the process of creation hits, please remember these notions. The key to happiness is not based on being monetarily blessed. And the key to success is the ability to accept the true potential of your true you to the best and the exponential power of our inner beings when it's oppressed and utilize what we naturally possess. Underneath it all, the skin, blood, bones, what's left is our spiritual self and we must ingest the truth in addition to presenting it. Aside one another, not quite content, but above being complacent. We are all one from the cosmos to the dirt which we stand upon. We see the same moon, the same dawn. Now, in place of resist, think of it as persist, persisting that we be truly family in the face of adversity sharing generosity, unspoken reciprocity, given that it's a gift that keeps giving, accepting what we're receiving and reliving because we're human craving experience to satisfy this existence. And don't for an instant think that any of our labors are fruitless because the only constant thing is change. Ironic, chronically shifting and steer clear of drifting away only to fade, gonna need hell endurance, gotta ride out the currents, never forgetting to be present. Don't be hesitant to express what you've been suppressing within. We all steer ourselves in circles only to reminisce that the end is the beginning and spinning on top of twirling on top of galactic mother chaos, a boundless canvas, prosperity ties into matters of the collective consciousness of the masses and masses of miniature multiverses fractally abstract must obstruct destructive forces, but do so with constructive interference and recognize this is all in resonance to each other's cadence, the depths to which these wavelengths transcend, realities to shape and bend. We are the ones who mend 
And as much as we inherently breed toxicity, it's not a calamity. One is its own deity. As much as we inherently breed toxicity, one is its own deity. As much as we inherently breed toxicity, it's not a calamity. One is its own deity. Because time is just an illusion, not meant to cause confusion, cosmic fusion, and all these concepts fuse them and use them to fuel your system. And don't abuse your free will, use good intent. It's what we're meant for, to uplift each other, therefore we'll soar. Because time is just an illusion, not meant to cause confusion. See the cosmic fusion, all these concepts fuse them and use them to fill your system and don't abuse your free will, use good intent. The risk efficiency and engaging in mutual respect and common decency, to put it quite simply, except equivocally, it's quite all right naturally. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene, for sharing your song and spoken word. Uh, people said in the chat that stood out from your uh, second piece, and just the truth as well as presenting it. And also people said, we are the ones that men. Those are really important and they stood out to me too since re it's really relevant with current events happening. We have to take action and support different events to use our people power, which uh, connects with our theme with the showcase. Now let's keep the showcase going and give, give it up for the next performance by Michael. Hi, all. All right, so this is a piece that I read in, it's still a draft, so it might change in the future, but I'm gonna start. It is warm rain that drizzles from the sky. It envelops, caresses, and holds like the embrace of loved ones lost. It is an orchestra of 175 tongues that roll and hum to the melody. Language is no issue. My English blurs perfectly with Tagalog, with Pangasinan, with Visayan, play notes to a harana that I suddenly know how to play. It is karaoke binges, fueled by a San Miguel beer that runs through the night. Tone death chorus, stumbled words, and slurred bragging and all, to the tone of 90 sounds, 2000 speeds, and 2010s lyrics. It's living with Nanai and Tatai. Tito, Tita, Lola, Lolo under the same roof. And this time there are enough rooms and bathrooms for everyone. No one needs to fight for them in the morning. Instead, it could be Lolo and Lola eating pandasal with coffee, spouting stories like scenes better than a movie in Lola and Lolo stories. I hear about the swimming in clean rivers, arguments with five other siblings, and odd jobs that take them from Saudi Arabia to even Canada about how they raised my nanai with little money, but enough love and grit. It is nanai and tatai's basalubongs from work. Old hotel brownies and pasta from the graveyard shift. In this place, my nanai's arthritis is gone. It doesn't matter how many sheets need to be folded or put on beds or how many bathrooms have to be clean. In this place, my tatai's back pain is gone. Heavy hotel furniture is nothing for him. Neither is cleaning hotel rooms. With a snap of a finger, these jobs do them themselves. So what do my parents do? My parents get to watch telenovelas all day lounge around in fluffy bathrobes, and if they want, they can take a day shift at a job that uses their Philippine degrees. This place is paradise. My titas and titos are able to give unslid advice in person instead of through telephone screens. And I'm able to tell them about my day without being scared that something gets lost in translation or fear that I don't know the Tagalog word for what I want to say. My uncle's HIV is gone. He doesn't need to be constantly scared of getting sick. My aunt is no, no longer has to prick her skin with needles and rely on insulin. She can eat as much hollow hollow as she wants. This place is safe. There are no wars on drugs, no strip minings on ancestral land. No, the cultures here in this place are thriving. 
no one is scared for having their opinions and thoughts heard when you first enter this haven. They give out lays of Sampakita. They take your hand and place it on their foreheads and tell you, you don't have to run anymore. This is our final destination. Thank you. Wow, that was, takes me back, makes me want to go back home right now to the Philippines, to everything that you described, Michael. Thank you so much um, for that piece. Um, we have a, uh, pr another presenting organization coming up, and I do apologize um, because we are running a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, and because of uh, data and <laughs> the network uh, that's happening, uh, situation that's going on in the Philippines right now, um, the folks from Liang um, aren't able to hop on right now. Um, however, um, we did um, we do have a volunteer uh, from the audience who is willing to perform a piece uh, for the meantime. Uh, his name is Mark uh, Bella. He is my cousin and I appreciate him <laughs> being able to hop on last minute. What's up, cuz? I see you, you're there over at Bindle Stiff as your background, but um, I, folks can show some love to Mark. Searching for a heart of gold, and I'm getting old. I've been to Hollywood, I've been to Redwood, I've crossed the ocean for a heart of gold. I've been in my mind, it's such a fine line that keeps me searching for a heart of gold. And I'm getting old, that keeps me searching for a heart of And I'm growing old. Keep me searching for a heart of gold. I've been a miner for a heart of gold. Okay. 
That's cool. That's it. Caller. Wow. All right, Mark. Thank you so much. An amazing song. Um, that was uh, really appreciate you doing that last minute um, for being able to hop on um, for for the showcase. Uh, Mark and I, we lived in Davis City for a long time. And so I'm glad you were here to support. Thank you, Mark. Um, okay, so uh, again, show some love from Mark. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, we are still um, waiting for the folks at uh, from Leung to hop on, but uh, we do have another performer willing to hop on the mic and um, she's also a co-organizer of the showcase event and um, <laughs> is, is down to perform a little something so thank you so much uh, welcome Steph can you hear me okay you got it yeah um Okay, so I was not prepared at all for this, but um, first I just want to appreciate everyone who has performed and um, you know provided resources um, and being in community. Uh, this is what we need right now. It's healing, and uh, I don't know. I, I I was like thinking about some of the themes that ran through some of the pieces about like. Um, the ocean and water and, and um, on the fly, I was trying to go through my stuff and figure out like what I would share. And so this is a piece um, related to when my uncle, my favorite uncle in the, in the Philippines, in the home, in the motherland, like he passed away um, right before COVID, like not even weeks before. Um, and I traveled with my my dad to to visit his brother and it was just an interesting um experience because uh i was just thinking about the ways that i'm connected to the land and the ways that i'm not you know and so i'm just gonna read off of what um i journaled um so whenever i return from the philippines i'm always reminded of the ways i'm deeply connected to the land and the ways that I'm not. As a US born Panay American, I'm still metabolizing all I took in from moments of witnessing collective healing and individual reflection time. Words haven't served justice, but here's what flowed on the flight back to the States in response to my experiences. The body took a moment to catch up. The spirit knew it was home eyes locked, souls rooted into each other, into the land. Salt water nourishes the barren, struggles meet rolling down the cheek, meeting the corner of the lip, flames flicker, sweetness burns to bitter, mouths barely break open, truth finally spoken, speaking to hearts broken, spilling into the ocean, telling stories, souls telling, Generations back and forward, they danced, they laughed. Moments suspended in time. One becomes many, all are one. Once fragmented, they collide. They coalesce into shallow streams. They remember, they return. Restoration lies at the shore. That's it. Short, thank you. All right, thank you, Steph. Uh, that was a great, great piece. Um, and and thank you for being able to um, fill in for, um, for us, for uh, Liang to get on. So thank you so much. Um, again, folks, uh, Steph is also a licensed um, mental health clinician. So again, if any, the topics that we're going over, um, and if you want to talk to anyone about um, anything that you uh, that comes to mind, and she's willing to uh, check in with folks uh, during and after uh, the the show, so um, feel free to message her here. And yeah, again, thank you, Steph. All right, folks, uh, we're getting towards the end of our program, and thank you so much for uh, sticking around and 
uh, listening to the great performances and presentations. We have one last presentation coming right up, and it is all the way from across the, the globe, uh, hailing from the Philippines and Mindanao. Uh, would like to welcome uh, T from the Liang Network, doing great work out there in the Philippines, here to share the work that's being done out there. We wanted to connect um, all of the work that's happening locally, regionally, and internationally. So um, just to let everybody know what's going on, right, about the, the different issues happening everywhere. So thank you again, T, for being here. Uh, my name Buntag, and the mic is yours. Everybody, please welcome T from Liang Network. Hello. So, okay, please bear with me. It's saying I have unstable Wi-Fi network. Are you able to hear me? Okay, lit. All right, let me pull up this. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Share screen. All right, we good? Thank you so much for having me. I'm from Liang Network. So my name is T, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a founding member of Liang Network. Um, obviously I'm from the US, but I've lived in the Philippines a few years now working directly on the grounds with indigenous communities um, as a volunteer teacher at a Lumad school and now as a full-time advocate and organizer here in Mindanao. So the Lumad people are indigenous or native to the southernmost island in the Philippines, Mindanao. Um, they're, Lumad is a collective term, it's an umbrella term for 18 ethno-linguistic tribes. The Lumad still exist today because they have resisted Spanish colonization, Japanese occupation and American colonization. And until today, they're still resisting neo-colonialism in defense of their uh, rights to self-determination and their ancestral lands, um, primarily um, fighting against the entrance of large-scale mining. Um, these are photos. This photo here on the left, this is a photo taken in UCC Pihuan Evacuation Center, um, where Leon Network here in the Philippines does most of its work on the grounds. Um, this is a photo from a ritual happening in UCC Pihuan, and on the right side we have uh, two Lumad students who also are based in the evacuation center. So the name of our organization is Liang Network. Liang is a Manobo term for woven basket. Uh, as you can see in our logo and in this photo here, um, the woven basket is used to carry um, everything from harvested foods to chopped wood. And in our logo, you'll see that it's a woman carrying the liang. So the reason why we chose liang as the name of our organization and as our symbol is because historically Lumad women in their communities have carried the brunt of labor uh, on their backs. And today um, women are challenging that gender role where you know most of the labor is put on them, but they're also now carrying uh, the struggle for ancestral lands. So, excuse me. So, in our mission statement of Liang Network, uh, we are weaving together our diverse experiences, skills, and resources. So what that means is that people all over the world, people globally, um, are using at their capacity whatever they have to offer to contribute. Because we believe in Liang Network that all people, you know, given your particular skill set, your experiences, your talents, um, your knowledge, that you have something to contribute directly to the defense of land here in Mindanao. And of course, Liang Network is local to global advocacy network, meaning that we not only um, advocate about what's happening here in Mindanao and in the Philippines, but also we work to connect struggles local to global. So we'll talk more about what that looks like. Oops. Okay, so our primary community partner is Sabokahan Unity of Lumad Women. So Sabokahan is a grassroots organization for and by Lumad women who are working to advance their rights as women um, and then as indigenous people. So primarily they're asserting their essential role as indigenous women in the defense of ancestral land and in their struggle for self-determination, for culturally relevant education, 
sabukahan, this is another manobo term. So saboka means one or unity. And this is a photo from a mobilization that we had for International Working Women's Day. And as you can see on their machete prop um, and in this placard, say Pantaron. So Pantaron Mountain Range is the ancestral domain uh, of the women in Sabukahan. So they're working to defend their ancestral land that they've been displaced from, from the entrance of large scale mining and other extractive industries. So the Young Network has only existed for a year. We launched in June 2019, but we're proud to say that in just a year, we've had a lot of achievements and victories um, in the advocating for civil Bukahan and their communities. Um, just some of the major accomplishments that we've carried out here in Mindanao are capacity training. So these are, these are capacity trainings that the women themselves request from Liang to facilitate or be in partnership. So literacy numeracy is the most requested program from the Lumad women who have been neglected and have been denied their right to education by the Philippine government. So this photo on the right is a photo from one of our first literacy numeracy classes in the evacuation center. I don't know if y'all can hear outside, someone's yelling for selling fruit. Um, we also do educational workshops. Uh, so current events, so that's both local, national, and international. So in these educational workshops, we watch videos and we talk about what's happening in the world, um, what's happening to other sectors, what's happening to other indigenous communities. And then um, we have educational workshops on health, uh, reproductive health, and then also reproductive services. And Liang Network here hosts visitors. So like folks like you, if you wanted to come out to Mindanao and integrate, visit one of the Lumad schools, come to the evacuation center, learn from the women and youth um, directly firsthand, Liang Network would be the ones to host you. These are other photos from the past year. On the left, we have a photo from one of those educational workshops. This is the uh, members of Sabukahan and evacuation center. They're watching videos about what was happening in Mauna Kea. And then here on the right, more recently, we did a series of workshops about the black liberation movement in the US and they asked the Young Network to facilitate that so that the women could make concrete connections between um, strategies of black liberation and Lumad struggle. So um, I just discussed things that we're doing on the grounds here, um, but since the founding of the Young Network, we have expanded internationally. I had the privilege of going to the US for a few months to help build what is now the Young USA. We have three chapters. We have Western Massachusetts, Oakland, and newly founded Southern California, as well as several volunteers and supporters all over the country and globally. So the work of Leon USA, they've done hella stuff. Sorry, I'm confused by this formatting. They've done hella stuff. One of the main things being fundraising. Um, so our support groups in the US have been able to fundraise enough money to meet the basic needs of over 500 Lumad evacuees. So that's not only Sabokohan, but that's their families and communities. Um, multiple times they've been able to meet those needs when there was no other access to basic needs. Um, was able to fundraise enough to carry out an earthquake relief mission, which we carried out here in Mindanao for other Lumad communities who were displaced by the earthquakes in the fall. Um, the Young Network has had concerts, art fairs, art projects, and online reading groups. We do teach-ins and visiting of classrooms. That was one of my favorite things I got to do when I was back. We shout out to Rod at Skyline College. We visited your classroom. We visited um, a pep classroom at Babu Wahai among several others. And this picture on the right, I chose this picture because one of my favorite things that we get to do in the Young is do workshops with youth. So in those workshops, we not only want you know, youth to know what's happening in the Philippines, but we wanna make direct um, connections to what's happening locally. So this is a workshop that we do usually with high school youth connecting the issues of gentrification, policing, and the need for ethnic studies in the Bay Area directly to what's happening to Lumad communities. So militarization, displacement from their ancestral lands and their fight for Lumad schools. Are we still good? Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Um, some more photos, shout out to Bayanihan Youth Group. This is another uh, youth workshop that we were able to do. And on the right, this is a flyer from a punk show that the Young Oakland organized and all the proceeds uh, went back here to Mindanao. So um, examples of what we do in terms of educational work and then in fundraising. Currently doing all the things I just said and then um, building our collaborations with artists, musicians. Um, we have a few people in radio who have been doing Lumad Radio Hour or hosting folks from the young, uh, talking about the work of Sabukahan and the Lumad struggle. Webinars, so of course under COVID, everybody's always you know, on, online doing webinars and Zoom calls. Liang has um, by chapter, they do webinars and then Liang USA as a whole is doing weekly webinars. So please check those out. Uh, advocacy against anti-terror law. I'm sure you've all heard about the anti-terror law by now. If not, you, you've probably heard about it from AB on the same uh, Zoom call. So yeah, so what I wanna say about anti-terror law really quickly. So Bokahan is definitely gonna be impacted. Um, as indigenous people, as environmental land defenders who are risking their lives on a daily basis for all of us really to, to preserve the environment for all of us, uh, they have already been targeted by the government with a lot of violence and discrimination. And that continues even in the evacuation center. And we can only expect that the anti-terror law is only gonna heighten those attacks. Um, so Liang here in the US is doing whatever is asked of them to support Subukahan in this time. Um, another thing, we're making a zine right now of art and poetry that supports plantation workers and farmers here in Mindanao. So um, even though our primary community partner is Sabukahan and Lumad schools and communities, we also work with other sectors here in Liang. And um, one of our recent campaigns of Liang USA, Land to the Tillers, uh, we had a call for art and those submissions are, are what we're gonna make a zine out of multimedia production. So one of the ways that people can plug into Liang as a volunteer, or if you wanna join, we're always looking for people with skills in web design, um, video editing, video making, any kind of multimedia is really useful. On the right here, you'll see a photo of, um, oops, sorry. So Liang USA and Liang Philippines were able to coordinate a little Q and A with a Sabukahan uh, youth. She's our youth coordinator of Sabukahan. Um, where people were able to submit questions and she would answer them on video. Uh, that's a series called Linkad, which you can watch on the young IGTV. Highly recommend it. It's hella funny. Berlin is <laughs> just really tight. I think you'll love her. Future work. Uh, we have some more reading groups starting in September. So I'm excited about this. If you see here this little link for NorCal reading group, highly recommend you plug into that. The reading groups have been really cool because, of course, because of the pandemic, people can't meet. Um, but the reading groups have been a place where people have said they've been able to build community and learn about what's happening in the Philippines, but also be able to relate it to their everyday life and whatever's happening in their own communities. Um, so please sign up for that. Planning cultural exchange programs. Of course, those have been suspended because of COVID, but we're planning to continue and to better the experience and programming for that. So something to look forward to. Creating an arts collective, if you're an artist of any, any form, any medium, we're always looking for artists to support in creating uh, posters, flyers, um, yeah, videos, music, anything to contribute to the campaigns of the Lumad here who don't always have access or capacity or time to be able to produce those things themselves. And that is a request of theirs that we have those uh, art materials and so Liang USA actually had planned um, and coordinated a Lumad speaking tour, but it was canceled because of COVID, um, where they were going to visit universities and communities all over the US and indigenous communities in the US. So uh, hopefully that's something we're going to launch again after the pandemic. So it's something in the future you could volunteer for or attend. Get involved. So something because y'all are in the Bay, I assume people on this call are mostly uh, in the Bay or all in the Bay. I recommend you hit up Liang Oakland. They're friendly. You could slide in their DMs. You could email them. Um, even like have coffee chat over web or over video. Um, get to know Liang Oakland since they're the closest chapter to y'all. Attend our online webinars and events. Um, invite Liang Network to your classroom, to your community center. Um, 
to whatever groups where you think people could benefit and um, both sides could learn from each other. And then contribute your unique skills, talents, and resources goes without saying, we really believe that everybody has something to contribute at their capacity. And of course, material support. So I really wanna stress that like without the material support and the efforts of folks in the US, we would not have been able to carry, a lot, carry out a lot of the projects um, that we've implemented here in Mindanao to directly serve Luman communities. And so um, we're fundraising right now for Sabulkahan and then for um, uh, plantation workers on banana plantations here in Mindanao who have been really, really hard hit by COVID and then um, farmers as well, peasant farmers. So yeah, lots of ways, lots of different ways that you can fundraise or donate. Um, this is a photo, I'm sure y'all all know Bam, the homie, Bambo De Pistola, who performed at our Solidarity Night in Oakland, where all the proceeds went to Sabukahan. All right, last slide. These are our social media handles. This link tree link that you'll see uh, has a bunch of other links to places you can donate. And then the Young Network has a website. And Sabukahan also has a website that was created by volunteers. And then the Young Network um, already has out their newsletter, which you can sign up for. We've had issued one newsletter and then the next one will be coming out this month. So please sign up for that. Um, it's free. You can learn about what's happening with Leon US and then what's happening here on the ground. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Tried to do 10 minutes. I hope it was okay. Apps for that. Come on. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. T, um, can we give it up again uh, for T and uh, the Leung Network, folks? Thank you so much. A um, lot of great work uh, that she uh, mentioned and um, a lot of bridges, right, that um, we could continue to create um, that have already started, right? We, she's uh, mentioned the work that's been done at Skyline and, um, in Oakland in the Bay Area. So I believe that this is an opportunity, right, for us to uh, continue to build these bridges um, and to also can, you know, consider, right, um, the Philippines, right, as, as us here in the, in the U.S. Um, are deeply uh, connected to what's going on out there. And so um, I think, you know, it's important that we continue to build these bridges, right, to, um, to learn about what's going on so that we could, you know, show support and, and get those ways to support. So. Um, we are running ahead of schedule and I uh, appreciate everyone being so flexible and able to, you know, think on, think on their toes. So uh, we, um, out of the request of some of the organizers here in the um, space, um, we would like to open up this portion, maybe the next 10 minutes or so for, um, a Q and A, and so um, would like to welcome Pat and Rowell from Anakbayan Daily City, Kirby from NAFCON, and T from Leon Network to um, kind of uh, be kind of on call right now to answer any questions. And if folks have any questions, um, please uh, write it in the chat. Um, and I would love to, yeah, I think we'd love to open it up to any of the folks from the organizations to um, answer um, the questions here. And Elaine, I feel like I've been like talking a lot. So and Elaine uh, uh, is also gonna be monitoring the chat room and will also ask any of the questions that come up here. So Alvin Gubatino on the chat asked, what is one thing we can do right now to support y'all orgs? Hmm. Um, what you can do? I know um, since we're like, I know the economy is like messed up right now and because of COVID, like to support like any of our orgs, like you can donate to us also like Another way to support is um, attend like our educational discussions 
And also for an upcoming protest that is happening on July 27th. Um, also like attend the Peace Ona as well to support us. In, in regards to um, the Rainbow Bright uh, Task Force, um, yeah, uh, we're, we're encouraging folks to um, link up with us. We, we actually have our, um, our weekly task force meetings on Fridays at 6 p.m. Um, so, um, you know, there are folks who are free, um, who wants to, um, you know, kind of want, uh, want to learn more about the plight of um, Filipino, uh, Filipino migrant workers um, in Daly City. Um, yeah, we encourage you all to um, you know, hit, hit up our, our email, um, um, message us on our Facebook page. Um, you know, we have different committees as well uh, doing, uh, uh, we're trying to help with fundraising. Um, many of the workers that um, we work with come from our, 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 our low income or very low income. So we're trying to figure out ways we can help fundraise for them for when um, they do their testimonies. We know um, what that means is um, they can't go into work, which means, um, you know, they, they, they have to pay for rent and stuff. So um, we're trying to just help them uh, with that, uh, with some uh, economic relief when they have to testify. So if you want to join, uh, you know, the fundraising team um, or the storytelling team also, or, you know, just want to check out uh, one of our meetings, um, feel free to hit us up on our email. All right, so um, thank you, Roll and Pat. Uh, Kirby, is there anything um, that folks can do right now to support? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of th things you can do to support NAFCON. One, um, one thing you can do right now, right now, is to follow us on our social media. I pasted the handles on our, uh, on the, what do you call that? The pad thingy. <laughs> And you can see all the links there. So you can get more information on upcoming events, upcoming programs, especially in your local efforts. Um, you can also tune in for our uh, upcoming webinar collaboration, educational webinar collaboration with Kabatan Alliance. We'll be tackling a, a wide variety of issues. Um, we had our first one about the, the anti-terror bill, which is now a law, um, a few weeks ago. And yeah, if you can, volunteer with your local community, which our local left one affiliate. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kirby. Um, unfortunately, I don't think uh, T from Leon. Oh, here she is. Um, you know, she was mentioning that her stable, uh, her connection was unstable. So uh, bear with us as she reconnects. Um, also. Again, if, if you have any questions, right now is the time. So please, please uh, ask your question in the chat box and we'll have um, folks read it and uh, we'll have these organizations um, answer. Uh, T, uh, we saw yours on right now. Um, we have a question from the audience. Um, Alvin asks, what's one thing that we can do right now to support, um, to support? Hey, thanks for the question. One thing you can do right now to support, try the different things you can do. Um, first, donation. I figure people probably aren't like rolling in dough right now because of the pandemic, but um, we have a multiple fundraising outlets right now, crowdfunding um, sites that you can go to. Um, if you can't donate, that's okay. Like I said, if you're, you know, um, if you want to do something to support one of our campaigns, like the Save Punjab Mountain Range campaign, or the Save Nani River campaign, or the Save Our Schools campaign, you can plug in in that way. Um, if you're a writer, you can write a solidarity statement. Um, so my internet connection is unstable. To hear me. Can you? 
All right, sorry, uh, TV lost you there, but um, uh, just to kind of continue what she was saying, um, again, I think, you know, most importantly, again, uh, was the material support. Um, we'll be sure to make sure that uh, the links uh, to support these organizations are available to everyone. Um, and um, he still can't hear you, so um, we're just going to continue. Um, I have a question um, to, well, I guess if, <laughs> if your connection isn't really working, I guess the question won't really work out. My question was about, like, you know, what is the pandemic situation like in the Philippines? Um, and if any of the organizations are here, um, what is that like? Um, is it similar to here in the U.S.? Or, you know, what, what is the situation here? What you know? um, but this was primarily for T, uh, if you know, like, what has the pandemic, how has it affected the people there, and, and um, how has it changed things there? Is that a question for me from James? Yes. Uh, I put it in the chat box. It's just asking what's the pandemic situation? How, how has it affected folks in the Philippines? Right. Um, it's pretty bad, as I'm sure you've heard. Um, locally here in Davao City, where the Haran Evacuation Center is and where most of our core of Sabokohan is based, um, for most of COVID, we've been under enhanced community quarantine, which means that um, Sabukahan communities in the evacuation center have literally not been able to leave, go out at any time. Um, and they were denied, explicitly denied any COVID relief from the Davao city mayor, Sarah Duterte, who is the daughter of our president Duterte. Um, she explicitly said, I will not give any relief to the Lumas. They can go home to their Pantaran range if they wanna go home. However, as we know, if they go home, they're going home to um, military occupation and are subject to a lot of military and paramilitary violence and will be forced to fake surrender um, as, uh, NPAs, which they are not because they're civilians. So that's the situation. They're in the evacuation center. They have no relief. So they have no food and they have no healthcare services. Um, so everything has been entirely donation based. Haran um, has always been dependent on um, donations and the support of community partners because there is no government um, aid. However, under enhanced community quarantine, all people in Davao City had limited mobility. So the regular people, the regular organizations that would come and bring supplies were no longer able to do that because of checkpoints, being blocked at checkpoints, because of surveillance outside the evacuation center for a lot of um, heightened military protocols under COVID, people were not able to continue to support. Um, so one of the only support that the evacuation center has had has actually been coming from Liang in the US. Um, in the evacuation center, they've implemented, actually Sabukahan, the women were the ones to implement um, education about health protocols, because like they said, this is not the first time indigenous people in the Philippines have dealt with pandemic because they've always been denied access to healthcare because they live so remotely in the mountains. They've dealt with, you know, cholera, they've dealt with other pandemics where they had to take it upon themselves to rely on herbal medicines, to rely on social distancing. They said they've already implemented social distancing in their communities back home. Um, so they're, they're um, everything that they're doing is out of self-reliance and self-determination to protect their communities right now. Um, but it's pretty dire. There's really a lack of food and other basic needs. Uh, Liang Network here is gonna be carrying out a relief mission, hopefully this month, where we'll be able to use a lot of the donations coming in to bring relief to the evacuation center. But um, it's pretty bad. I don't wanna sugarcoat it, however, it's really remarkable if you see the work that um, Sabukahan is doing, taking the initiative. They were the ones who sewed, uh, sewed, sewed face masks um, with sewing machines that were, we were able to buy, I don't know if y'all know Gretchen of Brown Girls, Brown Girls earrings, but Brown Girls, because of their donations, we were able to buy sewing machine and using that sewing machine, Sabukahan um, made face masks for the whole community because otherwise they wouldn't have any access to that. So 
Um, one of the major things that they're doing right now to have food security is sustainable agriculture, urban gardening. So if you go to the evacuation center now, there's urban gardens all over um, for every community in the evacuation center. So it's been really cool. And a lot of the donations that will be coming in right now will be, go towards, be going towards those urban gardening projects because they don't have any money of their own to buy seeds and tools and soil because we're right in the city. Oh, yeah. Awesome, thank you T again for answering uh, my question. Um, again, one last little call out for any uh, last questions you may have uh, for T or uh, Pat, Rowell or Kirby, um, feel free to uh, ask your question here in the chat. I actually have a question for T about Liang Network. So I, you mentioned in your presentation that you had teach-ins and visiting, and you visited classrooms in Skyline College. So, can you elaborate on uh, how you did that, or how Liang Network uh, visited classrooms at Skyline? Uh, I think Rod is in here. Is Rod still here? We we were able to through James and other folks who have visited Mindanao and visited the Lumad communities. They connected us to Rod at Skyline College. Uh, that was how we were able to visit Skyline. Um, other schools that we visited, other colleges and other high schools, it was also, you know, like having someone inside. So that could be a way that y'all contribute is um, inviting us. So folks just learning about Liang and wanting to support and talking to their professors, talking to their teachers. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. It's you. because Rod made space for us. Really. Okay. We had a good time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, another major thing is if you're part of a club or you're part of, yeah, if you're part of a college or high school club or organization, um, that's one of the major ways that we're able to connect with campuses is through clubs because clubs have um, schedules and budgets to allow that. All right, thank you again, T. Uh, thank you again, Kirby and Pat and Rowell for answering uh, the questions that we've had for you. Um, we're getting towards the end of our program. Uh, we have a few announcements to make. Um, if uh, Elaine, you want to take this part? Yeah, so thank you all for coming to the showcase and listening to the performances. Uh, shout out to the performers, the hosting organizations, the Cypher Learning Community from Skyline College, the Associated Students of Skyline College, the Filipino Mental Health Institute and NAFCA NorCal. But most of all, shout out to our viewers and audience for supporting us in this second showcase. The next Daily City by Anihan showcase will be on August 2020. The date is to be determined and we will send you follow-up emails for everyone with the, resources, with the resources from today and for the future event. All right, and uh, yeah, let's take a look at the Padlet. Um, a lot of y'all wrote some great messages on there. So I'm going to just do a little quick share of what the Padlet is. All right, uh, here we go. Um, so you can see links here um, from NAPCON, links from the artists. Um, we will make sure we compile these links, um, but I see a lot of love shown everybody. So thanks for everyone for checking in and for posting your pictures and for uh, sharing uh, more about yourselves here on this Padlet. Really cool uh, resource for folks to be able to, you know, post all at once. So um, at last, we do have a uh, quick polling uh, that, we, that we want to um, ask everyone who has attended today. Um, just a few questions we're gonna ask folks about the showcase. Um, in a few seconds, you should see the poll right now. So if y'all could please um, answer these questions, um, feel free uh, to put in uh, your answers for the poll. This is my first time ever doing something like this. But uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from you about how um, this event has impacted you. Um, giving you information and resources um, and how to get involved and 
to kind of, you know, making sure that we're um, meeting your expectations when it comes to like how we're presenting this uh, showcase and um, also, you know, giving a chance for folks to probably to, to give a chance for folks to participate in upcoming um, showcases. We are a collective of different organizations and individuals who uh, want to create this space as a monthly um, space in Daly City. So if you're interested in um, participating in the planning process, uh, please let us know. And uh, yeah, we'd like to hear more about, you know, your feedback for the show. And so let's see, has everyone voted? Um, is that how it works? Why you show who voted or uh, no. <laughs> works, but uh, thank you for everyone who has um, shared uh, their input for these uh, for these polling questions. Um, before we go, we're going to um, so, take so a Alvin, quick... James, oh, go ahead. Yeah, it looks like um, Alvin said there's fifty percent that um, responded. So okay, do you want to look for people to just? Are we? Seventeen. Oh, I see. Waiting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering: Do these are the polls being uh, are the results being shown to folks, or is that I'm not sure how this works? But um... just us. Okay. All right. We'll uh, keep track of this. All right. Wait for more folks to finish the poll. And is it okay if we move on? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Um, so we are going to take a group picture real quick. Um, let's see, who would like to take this picture? Okay, let me stop sharing my screen. And we're gonna take a picture. So if uh, folks could uh, share the camera if you're comfortable, uh, we're gonna take a group picture real quick. Uh, again, thank you uh, to our uh, planning committee. Thank you for uh, the presenters, the performers, and for uh, the folks in the audience uh, for sharing your time with us today. Uh, if everyone uh, could take a quick picture, I'm gonna take one right now. I'll try this again. All right, next page. All right, great. Um, we're going to have in the song bug suck. Uh, Elaine uh, and I will get us started. So uh, maybe Elaine, start with a uni clap, or do you want to say song bug sucks out? Uh, I'll say the song bug suck. Okay. All right, everyone. So unmute, right? Should we unmute? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah I'm mute. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Do it. Faster. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. We will follow up with an email uh, shortly uh, this week. And uh, we look forward to our next open mic, our Daily City Showcase next month. See you again. Good night. All right. Much love to you all. Good night, everyone.